So today we're gonna to talk through opportunities, paid campaigns, and designs. So as we're going through this, let me know what questions you have, especially since it's just the three of us. Um, we can be interactive. I wanna make sure you guys get the most out of this as possible. So today we're gonna to kick off with opportunities and opportunities are serve two purposes. One, to help manage your sales funnel. So it kind of can keep track of any time you have a new lead or you meet someone new that's interested in real estate, kind of track all the activities that you need to do to get them from that met introduction all the way to closing. And then the second thing the opportunity does is it's where we manage all of our documents for compliance review. So we can submit those to Lynn and Alita for review. So to get into opportunities, we'll click over um, on the left-hand side to the icon of the handshaking. And when you roll over, it says opportunities. And we'll just quickly do a quick overview of the opportunities uh, main default screen. So here you can see at the top of the screen, it says my name, so Nicholas Core. So this lets me know that these are all my opportunities that I have in the sales funnel. Next to that is all opportunities. And I'll show you in just a minute, um, but that's just gonna be a list of all your opportunities, not in, not in the sales funnel um, graphic, and then all discussions. So on this screen here, um, you can disregard this import from .loop because we don't need that. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see here, it's broken out into listings, buyers, and leases. And, they ha and this is the sales funnel. So you can see we have our phase is gonna be cultivate, appointment, active, under contract, and close for listings. And then for buyers, it's cultivate, appointment, active, under contract, and close. So it's the same. Um, and those phases are gonna be kind of the key phases of a transaction. And these phases are um, static. So Keller Williams Realty International, when they built command, they, at, based on all the agent feedback, they decided that these were the five phases that were consistent across the board for every state and every agent. And then as you look in these uh, sales funnels, you can see the number of opportunities that you have within each one. So right now I have uh, one listing that's an appointment, two that are active, one that's under contract, and currently zero that are closed. And then on the right-hand side, it has two pieces of information that are pretty interesting. First is our potential income. So to show us, if we were to close 100% of those transactions, what would our GCI be? We could make, you know, based on what I have in here, most of these are just demos. Uh, I can make $48,450. But then below that is the probable income. And this is based on the, the percentage of likelihood that you are to close a specific opportunity depending on the phase of the transaction that it's in. So when you first meet somebody and in the cultivate phase, you probably have a pretty, you know, 5% chance of closing that piece of business. But once you kind of move them to appointment and then active, that percentage, that likelihood of closing that transaction increases up to like 80 or 90%. So this probable income shows that based on where my opportunities are in the sales funnel, I'm probably going to make $28,000. Knowing that I'm not going to win every appointment that I go on or not every active buyer I have is going to close or every active listing I have is going to sell. So that's just a guess on your part. So it's not a guess. Um, and as we go through uh, deeper into the sales funnel process, we can update the percentage, the probability percentage of closing for each one of the phases. Okay. I have numbers that I can share with you. So um, I can share with you both templates for how we break up the phases and stages and the percentage of likelihood of closing. Uh, once you do a certain number of transactions, command will actually learn your business and start to update those numbers based on the number of closings that you actually have. Okay. So yeah, it's not just a guess. It's, it, you know, it's probably not hundred percent, but you know, correct in that, you know, probably only $28,000, but, um, it's a pretty educated uh, formula. So if I scroll down, it's gonna be the same thing for buyers and leases, shows us our potential and our probable income. 
Then at the bottom, it just shows us this great ch um, chart that kind of breaks up the percentage of our listings to buyers, to leases, uh, and kind of how those are tracking over the next couple months. And then closing this month. So if you have anything that's in here that's expected to close this month, it'll be down here, um, just so you can keep track of it. So this is a great way that as you are looking at your sales funnel, you can come here and quickly see, all right, what do I have going on? I, I can look at this and say, okay, Nick, I really need to start picking up the phone. I need to start sending out my text messages. I need to lead generate because I need to start um, cultivating some of those relationships to build my sales funnel because right now, I'm, you know, I'm getting things kind of further down the bottom of the sales funnel. I'm not, I don't have a lot of business coming in soon. This also builds on um, the idea of our builds on reports. So in TCO2, we walk through reports and setting your goals. So what are your business goals for the year? What's your GCI goal for the year? Uh, what's your net income goal for the year? And as you input that, that'll let you know how many leads you need to get, how many appointments you need to get. And when you put all this stuff into the opportunities, those two systems will speak together and you can know exactly everything that you are doing and if you're doing enough of it to reach your business goals for the year. All right. And then in the top right hand corner, we have create opportunity. I'm going to wait um, just a little couple minutes on showing you how to create opportunities because I want to walk through um, the different stages and creating phases of the sales funnel. So up here in the top right hand corner, anytime you have a new opportunity, let's say you meet someone at a party and they're like, oh yeah, I'm kind of thinking of buying the next six months, you could go through and create an opportunity and put that in that cultivate um, phase. So now I want to show you within uh, each one of the state with within each one of the phases the different stages. So I'm just going to click into cultivate uh, in the listings. And you'll see here, I have these different stages. So first stage is watch lead, then nurture lead, and then hot lead. Those are the three stages of the cultivate phase. You can make these whatever you want, and I will actually send you a template. I can do that to you. I will send that to you right now. Uh, let me come over here, chat. I'm going to send you um, these two outlines for opportunities. Let's do the buyers here, the sellers. So um, you both have, I just uh, put in the chat box, the handouts for what you can use to build uh, your different stages, phases and stages. Um, so you can see here where watch lead, it says 5%. So Jeannie, to your question earlier, is it just a guess? Well, no, because I let the system know that if I have a, a you know someone that I just put in the cultivate phase and I put them in the watch lead stage, that there's a 5% likelihood that I will close that piece of business. And then for nurture lead, 7%, and then for hot lead, 10%. Now, if you wanted to, I could change this right now to look at the list view. And that way it'll show me all the different opportunities that I have. Same view, it just may a little bit, be a little bit easier because depending on the number of um, stages you have, there may be more than just shows up on the screen and you have to scroll right to left. And then uh, for appointment, I can click over here. And then you see here, these are the different stages that I have. So scheduling appointment, scheduled appointment, kept appointment, and post appointment. And you can see as I go through those different stages, the percentage, uh, the increase of um, the likelihood of closing each one of those uh, increases. And then over here on the right, you can see I have one opportunity that I have within post appointment. So I've gone on the appointment. We haven't listed yet. We're, we're waiting. So it sits right here and there's a 40% likelihood that I will close this piece of business. So you're probably thinking to yourself, all right, I see Nick here has, we have the cultivate phase and he has these three stages of watch lead, nurture lead, and hot lead. 
I don't have any phases or I don't want those phases. How do you create those different stages? Excuse me, sorry. I always get phases and stages mixed up. So please correct me if I uh, mix it up and I confuse you, I apologize. So let's say I want to update my stages. So I just come up here and you can see there's a little button that says edit stages. So click on edit stages and I can add a stage. So let's say I just, I wanna create a new stage. So this will be, uh, I'll make it position four to four and I'm gonna make this um, training stage. And here, let's say I wanna make this a 12% likelihood that if someone is in this stage, that I'll close that piece of business. And I will click save. And now I have just added that stage. And I added it to the fourth position, but you know what? You know what? I actually think that this would be better fit as the third stage. You can just drag it over here on the left hand side. You can just drag it into whatever position you want. And then let's say you want to edit it. Let's say I want to I want to edit this because I think actually it's in you know position number three, it probably only has a nine percent likelihood of closing. So I can just click save. Perfect. And now to get even more granular, because the best thing about opportunities is it's supposed to make your sales funnel process brainless. You don't have to do any thinking because when you put someone into the oppor into opportunities into your sales funnel, it command will tell you exactly what you need to do to reach out to that person or to manage that relationship to move them on to the next uh, stage. And the way command will do that is when you log in. It'll say, hey, hey, Nick, your tasks today are A, B, C, D, and it knows those are my tasks because I've created these checklists right over here for each one of my stages. And so it'll remind me of the things that I need to do to that piece of business, to nurture that piece of business. So for this training stage that I just added, you can see here for the checklist, it has zero out of zero items. Well, we want to add checklist items, so let's click on it. And let's add an item. So um, we'll add checklist item. So let's do um, call to check in and see how family friends are doing. Click save. Then I can add another item, um, send text message. Uh, about conversation, click save. Let's add another item. Uh, all right, so we'll do another item. Let's do um, send, let's do snail mail card. Perfect. So now I've added three items um, to my checklist. And again, you can rearrange them. You can just drag the, the six little dots on the left-hand side, rearrange them over here on the left-hand side. You can click on edit, so you can edit the name. So I'm like, oh, rather than snail mail card, I can put, um, you know, I just, uh, USPS card. Perfect. So now I can click save. So I've now added a stage to my cultivate phase of the training stage here. I've set the probability that it's, if someone is in this stage, it is a 9% likelihood of closing. I, for today's training, I did 100% just make that up. And then I added three items to a checklist. Again, over here to the right, you have a pencil button. Anytime you see a pencil in command, that lets you know that you can edit it. So you just click on edit. And if I ultimately wanted to delete this training stage because uh, you know it's a little redundant, I don't really need it, I can just click on the trash can item here. So I'm gonna come back over here to um, the cultivate stage and you can see it added the training stage right here and I just scroll over to the right and I can see all four of my stages. Any questions so far about phases, stages, adding stages and adding task lists? All right. So if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, put them in the chat box or unmute yourself. 
what I want to do next is I want to create an opportunity. So we're going to create an opportunity and then I want to show you how you can add specific tasks and due dates for that opportunity. So if I know that, okay, if I need to send someone a card, you know, within my training stage as one of, you know, one of my tasks, I can actually set a due date, but I can only do that at the opportunity level. So I'm going to come up here to the top right hand corner and I'm going to click create opportunity. Again, you could do this from back. Um, actually, I will just show you. So if I come back, click back here to the opportunities home screen, I can click create opportunity and it's going to be the same uh, pop up that we can fill in. So market center, it will default to Atlanta Sandy Springs. If you are on a team, you'll be able to select a team from the drop down here. Now there are different rules and regulations for each team depending on how that Rainmaker wants to set that up. So if you're on a team or you're considering joining a team or you are a Rainmaker, let me know and we can um, set up some time to discuss this uh, in more depth. Opportunity type, so you can select if it's a listing, a buyer, a landlord, or a tenant. And it's very important that you select the correct opportunity type because that will affect which documents you need to upload for compliance review. So if you're actually doing, if you're actually working with a buyer and you select listing, you're not going to be able to upload all of the correct documents. And Lynn and Alita are going to let you know that there's an error, that there's something wrong, you're missing documents, when in fact, you just incorrectly selected the wrong opportunity type. So for today, we're going to select listing. I'm going to select my client. Now, to select a, a client, just start typing their name. I do want to call out that you have to have already added this contact into command before making the opportunity. You cannot add a contact uh, for the opportunity right here. So I'll just select my contact. If I'm gonna do a, a co-seller, I'll select Pepper Potts. And then opportunity name. So the way I recommend always selecting your opportunity name or writing is the property address client's last name, and opportunity type. So for a listing, I know what the address is gonna be. So it'll be 1234 Main Street Northeast dash Stark slash Potts dash listing. Now, if you're working with a buyer and you're still, you know, just at, you know, at the showing portion of um, the funnel, you don't, you don't know the address yet. So as when you name the opportunity, just name it client last name dash buyer. Or then once you go under contract, you can update the opportunity name to include the property address. And the reason you want to include the property address is because it's going to help the MCA office keep track of all the documents, make sure that everything that they're looking at on their end matches the property address for the contract. And it just makes it uh, much easier for them to manage all those documents. Below opportunity name is custom tags. So in TC01, when we're creating contacts, we talked about custom tags. Those custom tags and the custom tags for opportunities are similar, but they are two very different systems and they're not the same tags. So the custom tags here that you may wanna use um, is uh, you know, parts of town that your clients are working in, uh, how you know them. So are they from Sphere, an open house lead, um, your database, uh, price point, and then what you can do with those custom tags, if you're, ever, if you're ever curious of, oh, what part of town do most of my closings come from, you can then sort, you know, by tag and say, oh, wow, most of my, you know, closings come from um, the West End when you thought maybe you were working a lot in Decatur, you know, or something like that. Uh, or you can say, oh, most of my um, closings are within the 300 to 300, 400 range you know, next year I really want to focus on that 500 plus range so you can kind of adjust your business goals and your activities based on what you're on your performance. So for me, I've already made a bunch of tags. So I'll just select um, Atlanta because let's say this is going to be in Midtown. I know this person, we're friends and I'll do a price point of, I'll create a custom tag. So to create a custom tag, you just start typing in what you want that tag to be. This pop-up shows up, it says create 400 to 500. Click on that. And now I've just added a custom tag of 400 to 500. So that'll let me know that this listing will fall within the 400 to 500 
uh, price point range. Estimated close date, uh, you know, you don't have to put it in here, but we'll just put, you know, end of August, because we want to close pretty soon. Estimated list price, let's do 425. Commission rate, 3%. Again, commission rates are negotiable, so whatever it is that you negotiate with your clients. Then opportunity phase. Here it'll show you have cultivate appointment active, so depending on where you are uh, in the process. So I'm gonna leave it as cultivate, because let's just say we just, we just met, um, uh, we just started the conversation. Uh, and then it will default to putting it in the watch lead. Let's add it to the nurture lead stage, and then I'm gonna click create. Perfect. So now it's gonna put me into the opportunity, which is fine. I'm gonna go back out to the sales pipeline because I'm gonna show you how you can um, make this um, some specific tasks that you'd want and time or, and due dates. So here I have my opportunity card. It's in the nurture lead stage of the cultivate phase. I can see here I have my checklist items. It says zero of three. If I, let's say I wanna make some specific checklists or due dates just for this, uh, this listing, click on the uh, checklist box here in the bottom right-hand corner. And then see it says follow-up call. And when you roll your mouse over those items on the right-hand side, it says set a due date. So I can click on set a due date. So let's say I met them, uh, I met Tony and Pepper this past Saturday at a party. I'm gonna set a due date of tomorrow and I'm gonna call them at 10.45 a.m. Perfect, so now I've set a due date. So tomorrow when I log in to command, it's gonna say, Nick, you need to call Tony and Pepper and follow up. Put seller on a drip campaign. I can set due date. I will do that on Friday and I can do that at, uh, oh, let me edit this, due date. Um, I'm gonna do it at 12 p.m. because I'm gonna spend my morning making my follow-up calls and my lead gen. So I'll do it at noon. Um, that's when I can start to play into command. Perfect. And then you know what, specifically for them, because I remember um, something, you know, I remember something very specific about them. I wanna add an item just for uh, Tony and Pepper and I can uh, send to uh, text message with um, with gifts. So let's say we have we had we're talking about uh, how we love to send gifts to each you know to our friends and family over set text message. I'll click save. So now I have added this task specifically and only only for this opportunity. And I'll set a due date. Um, and let's do that on we'll do that Saturday morning. And let's do. Let's do this at 9.45 a.m. Perfect. So perfect. So now I have all of my tasks. I know what I know what I need to do to take this opportunity and move it to the next phase, sorry, to the next stage and kind of move it along the process. And these are the tasks that I need to do. And I've given myself due dates. So now when I log on to command, I don't have to think about what, what do I have to do today to, to build my business? Command's gonna let me know tomorrow morning. I need to call Tony and Pepper and say, it was a pleasure meeting you. Please let me know how I can help you with your real estate needs. I'm always here. Then on Friday, I'll put them on a drip campaign and say, hey, I know you're, ready to, you're not ready to list just yet, but I wanted you to stay up to date with what's going on in the neighborhood. And then on Saturday, I'll send a funny gift and a text message and be like, oh my, this was so funny. I thought you guys might like this funny little gift. So you can see how I don't have to think about anything. It's good to go. Um, and so that way I can kind of, you know, not necessarily, not totally autopilot, but um, pseudo auto, autopilot my business. So I click close. And now I know I have these four tasks. Let's say uh, I, I started to take care of these tasks. I can come up here and when I've taken care of it, I can check that box and I can say perfect and close. So now I know, okay, perfect. And when I log in here, I have done two of the four things so I can double check and see, okay, what do I need to do? 
Perfect. I need to send a call to action and and do that. Oh, excuse me. Let me go back. And you can also hide the completed deep, uh, hide the completed tasks that way if you don't want to see them. They're not there. So let's say I go through, <clears throat> I complete all those tasks, I, I make my calls, my follow-ups, I add them to a drip campaign. Well, now I'm done with the nurture lead. I can add them into the training stage stage. So now when I come over here, there'll be a whole new set of tasks. Now I didn't create any tasks for them uh, for this training stage previously. And then when I'm done with the training stage, I can add them to the hot lead. And then I could come in here and I could add um, some stages. And then once, let's say I'm done with the hot lead section, I've finished that stage, I'm now ready to set an appointment. I can put them in the appointment phase. And to do that, just click on the contact card or the opportunity card and drag it up here to where it says appointment. Now I will tell you this, dragging these cards is not one of my strengths. It takes a few times. There we go. So now it is no longer in the cultivate phase. It's now in the appointment phase. And it's right there. So now it's in the scheduling. So I can add some tasks. I could create, I could create tasks from template. So I could, you know, if I wanted to add these tasks from template, I could. Or if I wanted to add uh, some specific tasks, I could add them here. And I can set a due date for July 31st. Any questions about um, adding tasks to an opportunity within a stage, completing those tasks, setting due dates, and moving that opportunity card from stage to stage and to the following phase? All right. So now that we've kind of built out our phases and stages of um, our listing uh, sales funnel, and we've created this opportunity here, one, two, three, four, Main Street, Northeast, let's jump right into the actual opportunity. So to do that, I'm gonna click on the opportunity here. But remember earlier I had mentioned, so you notice right here all the information and we're in the details of the opportunity. But earlier I told you there's a list where it says all opportunities. So if I come back to um, my opportunities home screen, as you can see here, an appointment, I have two, two opportunities. But I don't wanna go sifting through all the different stages within that phase. I can come up here and click on all opportunities and it is going to show me all the, uh, all the active opportunities <clears throat> that I have right now. So I can just see right here, okay, this is much easier for me to see. So I can just click on this and it's a lot easier to manage and it takes me to the same place. So that's my personal preference. So there are, there's two different ways that you can get into the details of your opportunity. So looking at the information here, you can see this is all the information that we put in when we created the opportunity. But now there's a lot more fields here uh, that we can go in and edit. So to do that, we'll want to click on the pencil right here. And as I mentioned earlier, anytime you see a pencil in command, that lets you know that you can edit. So I'll click on the pencil, come down here. We could adjust the opportunity phase or stage if we need to. Uh, time frame, time frame, three months. Appointment, let's say we scheduled the appointment for July. Uh, let's say we scheduled the appointment on July 23rd and the appointment date is actually July 30th. Then if you have an agreement, one date, contract date, close date, all that information, you can click save and update it accordingly. If you don't know it, you don't have to put it in there. Um, there are red asterisks if there's any required information. And then over here, uh, we have this box with the property information. I recommend that you add in the property information because when we go in and we work with DocuSign, DocuSign will pull in a handful um, of pieces of information directly out of command. And so I always recommend you put in as much as possible so it's 
less work that you have to do uh, in DocuSign. So for address, start just start typing in your property address. So one to Main Street, Northeast, Atlanta, Georgia, and it auto populates my address. Perfect. And if I scroll down, here's a quick little seller's worksheet. So I can fill in some of this information. So buyer's agent commission, we negotiated 3%. And then if you know what their mortgage balance is or second mortgage or taxes, you can add in all that information and you can show a uh, net sheet on the offer comparison. And we'll walk through that in just a moment. So now we have saved, we have all the details of our opportunity updated. And now we're gonna click through the different tabs within the opportunity. So we're in the details tab. This is gonna be kind of the overview of everything. Next is gonna be the seller profile. So seller profile, to me, the name of this tab is a little bit misleading, but basically what this is, is, is if your client downloads your mobile app and they create a login with the same email address that you have for them as a contact card, this will let the, the system will know that they have the app and within the app there are listing and buyers guides that are step by step throughout the process of activities that they're going to need to do and you manage that uh, from within command and it's, it makes it really easy so if they have a question of like okay now that we're under contract what do i have to do and you can build this guide and i'll show you in just a moment how to do that so the seller profile is just to let you know that they, if they have um, connected the app and they're using the guide within the app. So I wanna show you really quickly how you can access the guide because I think that they're really great and it's gonna be a very unique tool that us as KW agents are able to offer. So to get to the guide, we'll wanna come down here to the consumer applet And then we'll come up to this tab that says Guide Builder. And it will show us that we have a buying guide and a selling guide. They already have default information in there. So if you don't want to go through and make any edits, you don't have to, but you can. And I think that you should because it's a great way to provide um, useful information. So if you want to edit over here on the right hand side, click on the pencil. And I'm gonna click on introduction first. So this will just be a quick, um, if you wanna update your, any of this information, so you could change the title. So your, um, let's do your selling timeline guide. Oh, let's correct our spelling. And then you could update any of this text here. I recommend that you spend a little bit of time updating this. Um, just in that way, it's in your tone and your voice and your clients think that this is something that you really spent time putting together just for them. Nick, I have a question. Yes. Who, who is Paul? Who is Paul? What do you mean? Your, your timeline. Paul will be providing insights on each step. Should that be Nick? Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, I see there. Okay. Yeah. Or you could just put... Um, I will be providing insight, insights. I think that's just um, a placeholder. So, yeah, so go through here, make any updates, and then click Save Changes. And now we'll go to the actual guide. And so, as I mentioned to you before, like, this is a step by step guide that they can look at anytime on their phone to see what's going on with the process. So, um, I created this, this updating disclosures. Um, uh, step, uh, step, but it'll have, um, you know, showing your home step, review offers, inspection, appraisal. And if you want to make any edits to it, you can just click on it. And then you can uh, edit the image here. So if you don't like this image, you can change it. So let's say if I want to, if I want to change it, I can just click here to update my image. Uh, and I'm just gonna really quickly change it. I don't know if you can see, let's do photos. Uh, and we'll just use this. Perfect. So now I just updated that image. Is that simple? Uh, I can come down here, I can update the card. If I wanna update the subtitle, so what they see within that, I can do that here. 
and then the workspace text. So this is going to be where you can put a lot of information. It's that simple. And then you can also delete this step. So if you don't like this step, you can just click delete here. But let's say you're like, you know what? I want to rearrange this. Um, I can put just I can just click on the six old dots here, and I can click rearrange, and I can put these in whatever order I want. Now, I know that these are not in actual correct order based on the real process, but I just want to show you how you can move them. And then let's say it's missing a step, and you're like, you know what? This isn't this isn't just yet. I want to add a step. So you can click at the bottom, add a step. You can make this a default step or create a custom step. So we can uh, custom tap uh, a custom step. So let's do pre listing staging. Um, you can just type some text in here, preparing uh, your home for photos and showings is very important. All right. And then I could add an image here and it's required. So I'm just gonna add this image right here just for simplicity and click continue. So you can see over here and I can come in over here, um, staging, 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 just type in text. But you know what is also really great and I think it's what you can do here. Let's say you have two or three stagers that you love to work with. You can put um, stager, number one, phone number, email, stager, number two, phone, email. So you can actually put in the contact information for the different stagers, uh, different people that they may need to leverage at this specific stage uh, or part of the process. So when you're done with that, just click save changes. And I actually need to move this, so because this is a pre-listing staging. So let's drag this all the way up to the top. Perfect. There we go. And then just click Save Changes. So once you're done, this is the, the listing guide or the seller's guide. You can come back. You can do the same thing for the buyer's guide. Start your search, get pre-approved. So here, for pre-approved, you can go through here uh, and start adding information about different lenders that you may want. Making an offer, actually contract, home inspectors. You could start adding the different contact information for different home inspectors. So when they're like, okay, we're ready to make an inspection, say perfect. On the app, if you go to the guide, I have three really highly recommended inspectors for you. Pick which one, give them a call. You can compare rates to see what the difference is. There you go. And it's all right there. You don't have to do anything. So I think this is a great selling point for you as you were going on your listing and buyer's appointments. So that is the guide um, that's in our app. So that is what um, shows as the seller or buyer's profile. So I'm going to quickly go back into that opportunity. So I clicked on opportunities, all opportunities right here. So now I'm in the, the opportunity that I created this morning. We were just in the seller's profile. Now we're gonna move over to documents. Now documents is going to be a very important part of the opportunities functionality because this is where you're going to upload and submit all of your documents to Lynn and Alita for compliance review. All compliance activity is done through command. So you have no choice but to use it. So I wanna make sure you know how to use it properly. So you can see over here in the left hand, left hand side we have different folders so we have listed under contract and closed and you can see in the listed folder there's a handful of documents here that we can upload now one thing i do want to clarify is a couple things well i guess a couple things i want to clarify not all of the documents that are listed here are going to be are required these are going to be the most commonly used and regularly used documents uh, and GAR forms that you will need to submit for a listing. Additionally, if you have something else, you can add a document that is not listed here. So you're not limited to just the documents that are, um, are here. Um, then the last thing I want to let you know is that 
the files, the GAR forms that we use are not actually in command, they are in DocuSign. So we can add them up in uh, command for compliance review, but we don't actually work on any of the GAR forms here. The next is our under contract folder, and you can see here is where we will add our purchase and sale, our counter offer, um, our disclosures, earnest money copy, and then the last folder here is closed, and this is where you upload your settlement statement, your FMLS 118 form, uh, and any, anything else. Uh, your pay at close would get uploaded here. And then down here we have custom folders. So we have the ability to make custom folders. And I, I recommend that you take advantage of this because this is where you could put your inspection report. So I may wanna you know, make an inspection report um, folder. So that way I can upload, I can come over here, I can add document, uh, I can select document type, enter a note here, and do one, two, three, four, Main Street, Northeast, inspection report. And then I could drag and drop my folder here and add that, and I could also do the same thing. I can create another custom folder for the appraisal. If I had a copy of that, create folder. Because the benefit of putting all of those documents in here, because while they're not required for compliance review, is you can use command as your storage space. So that way you don't have to worry about everything being on your computer or being in DocuSign or dot loop. It can all be within command. So let's say in six months, your seller reaches back out to you and say, hey, we have a question, uh, like this seems kind of weird, or someone mentioned this, do you mind double checking? You know exactly where all those documents are, they're right here in command. Nick, I have a question. Yes. Um, I'm dealing with someone who does not do email. Okay. She's elderly. So I've got documents that she signed and I did the documents through DocuSign, the, the blank, you know, I filled them out. How do I get them back into DocuSign with her signatures? So you would have to scan them. So uh -huh. you, you can come to the office, we have the scanners here. Um, okay. There's a handful of different apps that you can use, so you can just scan them on your phone and then send it to yourself and then upload it into DocuSign that way. Okay, I know how to scan and save into my computer. I'm just not sure how to upload into DocuSign. So let's, so that's kind of a little bit of out of today's scope. So let's at the, either the end of the call okay. Okay. Um, or um, during the DocuSign office hours, we can walk through how to upload that into DocuSign. Okay, all right. All right, so kind of walk through the documents tab. One thing I want to point out over here is this nice big blue button that says start a transaction. And this is what's going to create that DocuSign room or dot loop if that's what you use. Um, and it's gonna connect the two together. It is very, very, very important that when you are starting a transaction that you click start a transaction here in, doc in command. Because if you create a room in DocuSign, you will not be able to retroactively connect that room to this command opportunity. So please be sure to always click start a transaction first. So I'm gonna click start a transaction. And you're gonna see it's gonna think for a little bit. And now it's gonna open up a new window and have me log into DocuSign. So I'm just gonna quickly log in. And now it's created a room and has the same name as the opportunity that I have in command. Now, I, I'm not going to spend any time in DocuSign today because I do have a training on Friday mornings uh, and there's a handful on YouTube as well. But let me know what questions you have. Like Jeannie, we can talk about your question later. But I just want to point out that, that when you click the um, start a transaction button, that's what happens. Another thing to keep in mind when you click on start a transaction, if you have your pop-up blocker on, it will prevent the DocuSign tab from opening. You'll usually get like a little notification uh, right here, there's a little been a little block. If it's not opening, that's usually what happens. And then once you've already once you click start a transaction uh, and it's connected, now you'll see this button that says go to transaction. So in the future, when you need to go back to Dr. Time, let's say you need to write an amendment or you need to get together um, your instructions for closing attorney, you can just click go to transaction and that will take you directly into that room in DocuSign. Any questions about the documents tab? All right, so now we're gonna jump into the offers tab. So 
this was built out. This is definitely came from uh, agent feedback is this allows you to, to put in multiple offers that you receive. So that way you can compare them within command for your clients review. So, so you have a hot listing and you receive three different offers and we want to send them all over because we are required by a law to share all offers with our clients. Well, this is a great way to manage that and share it with them. So what we want to do is in the offers tab, we're going to click on add new offer. And we'll just do, let's do, I'll name it one, two, three, four, Main Street, Northeast, offer one. Great offer. And now we'll just go through and uh, fill in the information. So offer date, let's say it was submitted today, close date. We'll change this to August 14th. And then parties. So seller here, it's gonna pull in all that information uh, directly from command. So the buyer's name, I'll just put John Doe. Uh, they're pre-qualified. Representation, uh, associate's name. So we'll just name this um, buyer's agent. And then the email and the phone number here, they're not required because um, we're not gonna be emailing them from command. And then we'll click on terms. So this is where we're gonna start adding all the details of the financing, um, or sorry, of the, of the offer. And um, you can see here, we have our financing amount. And it's pretty cool because what you can do is take uh, that information from their loan exhibit. So if they're gonna do, let's say we're gonna do $250,000 cash, I'm sorry, $25,000 cash, and we're gonna finance 400,000. That lets us know that their sales price, their offer price is 425. And then earnest money, you can either put a percentage, so I can put 1%, or if I don't, let's say they just offer 6,500, it'll automatically calculate that that's 1.5% uh, of the sales price. Option fee, don't need to worry about that for now. Uh, termination, buyer will give notice of termination. So this is gonna be due diligence. So one thing to keep in mind as we're going through the uh, offers is that this is built for KWRI, so for everyone nationally. So some of the terminology is gonna be just a little bit different uh, for the state of Georgia versus uh, what it might be in Texas or California. Uh, but the to give notice termination option is gonna be our due diligence time period, which is commonly 10 days. Um, so we have here, so seller costs, seller uh, will contribute to residential service contracts. So this is gonna be um, a home warranty. So let's say they'll do up to $525,000, or sorry, $525 to service warranty, uh, home warranty, and then they'll contribute uh, $4,500 to closing costs, to settlement costs, All right? And then it can go to agent analysis. So pros, um, quick, Closing, uh, pre-qualified. What else can we do? Um, full ask offer, cons, uh, want closing costs, uh, don't, let's, let me put cons, um, ooh, bad experience with recommended a requested closing attorney and in summary overall i like this offer so you can just kind of put some thoughts in there uh, and this is going to be really helpful so that way your your clients can kind of get an idea as you're compa as they're comparing the different offers which ones are really good which ones are bad um, and vice versa so once you input all this information we'll just click on save and now we have our offer here so what we can do is we can accept this offer, we can reject this offer, we can add negotiations. So let's say we kind of go back and forth. They submit a counter offer, so counter offer one. And we'll just go through the same, the same uh, process there. If you wanna add multiple offers, you can do that here. Um, but just for time's sake, I don't wanna add any more offers. But one thing that's really cool is that you can send this offer. So as I mentioned earlier, in the state of Georgia, we're required to share all offers with our clients. So in the three dots over here, uh, on the right-hand side, we can click on send offer. 
and it'll auto populate their email address. You can update uh, the subject. So I'll do one, two, three, four, Main Street review offer. Here are your offers, please review. And then I can also send a copy to myself and then I can add an attachment. So what I would recommend is that you actually attach your offer. So let me just come over here. I'll quickly attach something. Sellers, contract, uh, what is that? Purchase and sale, perfect. So now you can see I've added this purchase and sale agreement. I can preview it, I can delete it, and I can send this offer. <clears throat> I can send this offer in the bottom right-hand corner. Also up in the top right-hand corner, I can click on this preview icon, and it'll show me a preview of what the email is going to look like. So here is, you know, all the financing information, earnest money, close date, the pros, the cons, and summary. So it's pretty cool. And then I'm gonna click on this X here, and we can send that right there. If you have multiple offers, you can generate an offer URL. So that way you can send this URL to your clients and say, hey, click on this link here, and you can go and you can review all the offers that we have, and they'll be able to look at the same information. Once you've gone through the negotiation process and you guys have all come to um, an agreement, all right, we are going to accept this offer. If you click accept, well, I just want to point out, see, notice this commissions tab is grayed out. You can't click on it. Once you click accept, that commissions tab now becomes available. Now, we're only going to spend just a brief moment in time on the commissions tab because in the future, the commissions tab is going to replace green sheets, but for the time being, the MCA office still wants you to submit a green sheet as soon as you go under contract. The reason is the commissions tab doesn't have all the information that the MCA office requires, like our FMLS fees, um, I think some mentor fees and other, you know, KW Cares, stuff like that, that'll be important for them uh, to manage the books. So they're working out their process. So while they're still working that out, we're using green sheets. But I did just want to quickly show you the commissions tab and how you got here. Um, so this will you know, break out what my commission should be based on uh, all my fees. So I can edit any of the general information here. So close days, let's, let's add that close date of August 14th. Click save changes. And you can see here, it's gonna auto calculate. So my gross commission based on a 425,000 sales price, agent royalty, and break all this out. So I can edit this. Oh, perfect, it does have KW Cares here. So I can edit agent payment. So I'll come down here and I'll add $5 for KW Cares. I recommend that everybody add $5 for KW Cares on the green sheets. Cause it, just in case there's an emergency for one of our agents or someone in our region, we're able to help provide some support for them. So add that there. Uh, if you wanna put anything for the bold scholarship or whatnot, uh, if you wanna add any extra payment options here, so let's do, um, let's just see. we can do a concession and I can do a concession of $1,000. It's a concession on the closing statement off the top. Let's click add, save changes, and that will recalculate um, my split. So you can see over here, I will walk away with, what well, shows, that doesn't look incorrect, that looks incorrect. So anyway, so you can get an idea of how to work um, the commissions tab. Once that is rolled out and we're gonna be using this as green sheets, I will set up specific trainings on writing in those offers and working in the commission tab. The next last tab is notes. And this is where you can just add some notes. Um, and this is for your own use. This isn't gonna be a note that will go to Lynn or Lita. So you can just click on add note here, note title, um, you know, likes, pizza. So let's say I learned, you know, from working with these sellers to this transaction, I learned that they love pizza, uh, love Antico pizza. Um, take pizza to next listing appointment. So I know that in the future, if they ever reach out to me um, and they're like, hey, we're thinking about selling this house, I can, perfect, let's do a dinner meeting and I'll bring Antico pizza. 
and you can click save note and there it is. So then when I come back to this opportunity, it'll be there. And then our last tab is timeline. And this is gonna be really helpful because if there, anything ever comes into question um, of did you send that offer or when did you create the opportunity, when did you submit to compliance review, when did, when did uh, Lynn and Alita uh, review those documents, all that information is gonna be here in the timeline. So you can scroll down and see everything that you've done in this transaction is gonna be right here in this timeline. So let's say you don't get compliance review, you can say, hey Lynn, I sent you, the, I submitted these to MC on July 15th, I haven't heard back from you, it, I now close in three days. And you'll know that she never actually reviewed them because it'll be here in your timeline. So this is just really helpful uh, for you to kind of keep track of all your activity. You can sort by date range, activity type, individual, so if you're on a team, if there's multiple people working within that opportunity, you can sort uh, by all the different people that would be uh, working in it there. Really quickly, as I mentioned, um, submitting to MC, so that's gonna be one of the really important, uh, important steps of the opportunity process. So once you go under contract, you have documents, you're gonna upload them here, and then this button here, it says submit to MC, will uh, um, turn blue, so you'll be able to click on it. That's how you're gonna submit all those documents for Lynn and Alita to review. So make sure you click on that Submit MC button in the Documents tab of the Opportunity to submit for compliance review. Any questions about opportunities before we jump into designs? All right, we just walked through a lot of information so as you start to play around with it, let me know. Um, send me a text or an email and, and I'll help you out. So now I wanna jump into designs. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with Canva. Designs is set up so that way we have our own marketing Canva Photoshop-like platform uh, directly for us as agents and everything's for free. So to go to designs, I'm gonna come over here to the left-hand side and you can see this little, what looks like a little artboard, a little um, easel click on designs and this is going to take us to the designs home screen and it's going to show us all the designs that we've created in the past and then up here at the top it has all the different types of designs and I can click on email and it's going to show me all the email templates that I've created click on landing page it's going to show all the landing pages that I've made so if you want to quickly uh, jump to one of your designs you can just sort this way down here in the bottom right hand corner, there's this plus sign. So when you want to create a new design, click on the plus sign. And then it's going to ask us which type of design we want to create. So email. So if you're going to send out an email blast. Social. This really kind of more or less means digital. So if you're going to you know, create a piece of marketing that will be used you know, across social media, but email or any type of uh, digital channel. Print. So if it's going to be anything used that's going to be actually printed out or a hard piece of paper video or if you want to import a PDF because they made it really they made uh, designs really cool in that you could upload a PDF and it will deconstruct the PDF and you can edit it so today let's create um, a quick social piece of marketing so I'm gonna click on social and then next so just give it a second for um, the workspace the editor to load now, this, if this is your first time logging into Designs, I want to point out this button over here to the right that says Library. If you click on this Library button here, this is where you can start to add a bunch of information, so it's some specific text, images, logos, if you have a brand kit, that you can then use and quickly add to any design that you have. So some of this information will autofill from your marketing profile, but uh, you can come here to your details, so you can you know, add your name, your team name, your contact information or address, because if you're gonna be compliant for some of the documents or marketing materials that you make, you will need to add that information. So rather than having to type it in every single time, this allows you to just drag and drop it. Click on text. So if you have a tagline that you use regularly, you can add that here. Here you can see it pulled in my bio from my marketing profile. And then if you have a vision for your business or your team, you can add that there. Next is images, so you can see here I've added um, some headshots, so two different versions of my headshot. 
one more of a square and one rectangular. If you have an image of a background that you want to use or some cool um, design that you'd want to have kind of in the back of your image, upload those here. Next is logos. So I've uploaded my personal uh, logo there. And then here is the Keller Williams First Atlanta logo. You can notice that both of these logos do not have backgrounds. So then that way, whatever I put them on top of, it'll show through and look really great professional. And the last uh, tab is the brand kit. So if you spend a lot of money to have someone go through and create a whole brand identity for you, you may want to add specific colors, um, specific fonts to designs. And that way, when you are creating your marketing materials, everything will be consistent across the things that you've made in Canva versus the things that you've made in designs versus the marketing materials that were made for you. So if you want to add your colors, you can just click here and then you can type in the color code, which if someone has built a brand design for you, they probably gave you the exact color code. So you can just type that in there. So it's probably like pound F, whatever, you know, a couple letters and then click apply. And I guess that is some orange color. And you can add multiple um, colors there. So let's clear this. Uh, and then you can add fonts. So you have to have to you have to actually have the font file, the zip file on your computer to upload it here. Um, more often than not, you can probably download your font file um, from the internet and then just upload it here. But this allows you to have all that information in one place so you can quickly adjust uh, and change things so all of your marketing is consistent. So I recommend you check out uh, the library button up here in the top right hand corner before you do anything in designs. Then over here on the left hand side, we have a whole list of different types of design templates that are already pre-made for us. So the whole goal here is that we just have to make a quick updates at our image, at our logo, uh, and things are ready to go. Uh, and we look like we have a whole marketing department uh, creating this material on our behalf. So you can see here's our first one with our KW app. We have listings, buyers, lead generating, business basics, leadership, and templates. So you can just kind of click through here. So like the listings, here's a bunch of for sale flyers. So you can just scroll through and see all the different uh, files here. And then up here, you notice it says Facebook, Instagram, Instagram stories, LinkedIn, and Twitter. If you click on either one of these buttons, it will adjust the format of that marketing material to best suit that platform. So Instagram is going to be much more square focused, whereas Instagram stories is going to be very horizontal and rectangular. LinkedIn, much more rectangular, and Twitter can be the same. So all these different templates for a listing are all optimized for the uh, platform that you may use it on. And then it has just listed, updated price, and it's the same thing. So I can make one just for Instagram versus Facebook, and that way it looks uh, optimal on each platform. And then another thing I want to show you is, uh, if I come over here to buyer, you have a neighborhood snap. So if I click on this, I'm going to use this. And it's going to load. Just Sometimes it's a little slow. Um, but you see here, it has this quick little market snap update and it has some information about median price, sales price. Well, that's really cool. I want to update that. So to do that, so you click on, click on the um, market snap icon, and then the KWLS icon over here in the far left will become available. Click on that, and then we'll click on the snapshots tab, and I'm gonna search, search snapshot. So I live in Forest Hills in Smyrna, Georgia. So I'm just gonna type that in. Oops, spell that incorrectly. Nick, I thought you said you were doing a buying snapshot. A buyer's, a buyer's neighborhood snap. Yeah, so, um, well, it'd but be the same. a listing. Well, I, it'll be the same thing. I can, it, I just okay. want to show you how to use the snapshots. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, so I typed in Forest Hills, Smyrna. It selected uh, Forest Hills, Smyrna, Georgia right here. You can see I have the vertical version of this. I have a, a square and then a map version. And then what I can do is I can just come right here and scroll over and you see this little um, icon that kind of looks like a recycling logo, but it says replace image. So if I click on that, it'll automatically replace that market snap on that flyer. And then I can just come over here, ah. and update this text to say, picture yourself in Forest Hills. And in this logo, I can replace that. 
with the logos that I've uploaded and just click replace. Oops. That did not replace property, so I'll just drag this over here. And now I've just created a flyer. And it was that simple. So I'll click done. Where, where is your name on it, if you don't mind? Well, I have it. I didn't put my name on it, um, but I could. But you can. Okay. So let me come back, back into designs. Click and social next. Perfect. Okay. It looks like it's loading, but being a little slow. So yeah, so this is a buyer snapshot. So that way, you know, if you were interested in buying or whatever, um, you could use these. And then here, I wanted to show you where our presentations were. Lead generating, business basics, leadership. So I'm not finding it, but there were uh, listing presentations and um, buyer appointment presentations in here that were really great that you could go through and um, update those. And it looked really, really sleek uh, to you for your presentations, but I am not seeing them here. And I don't want to spend too much time in here. Okay. Uh, any other questions about, this is really, really brief and it, for the sake of time um, on designs, but any questions about designs that I can answer for you? No. All right, perfect. So, um, Last thing I want to show you really quickly is paid campaigns. So over on the left hand side, we'll click on the megaphone icon for campaigns. And you can use paid campaigns um, or campaigns in general. Uh, if you want to promote a listing or if you want to attract buyers or advertise an open house. To do that, we'd want to come up to the top right hand corner. We're going to select create a new campaign. And this will ask us if we want to do a social ad paid, search ad paid, a social post. And a social post is just going to be an organic piece of content that will be shared on our business page to only be seen by people that follow that business page. Then we have direct mail or email. So today I want to create a quick social ad. So it's like paid, I'll enter my campaign name. And everything in DocuSign just, you know, or sorry, in dot, or, excuse me, in command is just start at the top and work our way down. So we'll just name this test campaign, today's date. And we want to advertise a listing. All right, so I selected the goal. Select the goal, it's gonna be most relevant. It's not gonna affect the delivery of your campaign, but just uh, today we wanna to advertise a listing. And I'm gonna, I want this to run across Facebook and Instagram. I always select both Facebook and Instagram because Facebook on, owns both platforms. So it's able to optimize delivery to either platform, depending on which one performs best. So I click set up campaign. And because I selected listing, it's going to show me uh, my active listing. So here's my active listing. So I can just quickly click select. Perfect. Now it's gonna pull in the images and text uh, directly from the FMLS listing, but I, I do have the opportunity to go through um, and edit. So for add text, oh, excuse me, I can um, update this to whatever I want. Beautiful, four bedroom, three bath home in Canton, Georgia. And then for whatever reason, emojis work super well for Facebook ads. So you can just, you know, Pop in a couple emojis. What you know, and then you can search for one. So if you want to put it a house, perfect headline. And you notice that as I'm uh, working in and updating these fields, it automatically updates the preview over here on the right. So headline, so um, Cherokee Reserve Home for sale. 345. And then here's the up the headline that's been updated here. And then fall in love with your new home. 
right? So you can see that updated the description down here. Click on save add text, add media. So it's gonna to default to the main picture from the uh, listing, but I can change that if I want to. So I can just click on delete image and then I select media for this image or for this campaign and it'll pull up all the listing photos. I can add images for my computer if I wanted to or my design library or videos, but I wanna use this image from my listing and I'm gonna preview and crop. And I wanna adjust it because I want this to show the very top of the house as well. And I recommend using the wide format. You can make it square or vertical, but I like the wide. I think it looks uh, the best and will look best on Facebook. So click on save image and that's updated here. And then if I have uh, the DBA logo, it's gonna automatically pull in the one for my um, marketing profile, but I can edit that. So I can just drag and drop. So I'll come over here to and grab the logos that I have saved from wallsgrouphelpdesk.com. Do P and G. There we go. And I can see that logo shows there. And I'll include the ownership statement that each office is independently owned and operated. And I'll click Save Media. And now we'll go to Facebook and Instagram ads. And this is where we're going to configure which page this ad will show under and the targeting capability. So when you sign in um, in settings, you'll connect your Facebook pages or your personal page, and that will load all the pages that you have admin access to. So you can see here, I'm gonna select uh, Nicholas Core Real Estate Group. This is gonna be the page that'll show as an advertisement and updates here in the preview. So there's my icon there. For Instagram ad position, I always just recommend Instagram ad versus Instagram story because I don't like the way uh, ads render in the story. And then for destination, you can use the Facebook lead generation form or a landing page. So if you want to use this ad to get to gain leads, which a lot of people do, you'd want to use the Facebook lead form. And what that means is when someone clicks on the ad, a pop-up will show that will ask them to submit their name, email address, and phone number. That information will actually be populated from their Facebook profile and they'll click on that. And then we need a follow-up destination URL. So once they submit that lead information, where are they going to go to? So I want to send them to a landing page that I've created for this listing. So I can click on choose landing page and it's gonna show all the landing pages that I have created in command. So let me scroll to the, to the right one. So here we have 186 Cherokee Reserve Circle and that is my uh, landing page. The next is ad targeting. So who do we want to deliver this ad to? It's gonna to default to the location of the listing and a 20 mile radius around that which is, uh, it's fine, but it's gonna deliver this to a whole bunch of people that may not be interested in a new house. So I always recommend you use custom settings. So click on that toggle there. And then location, I always recommend, you know, we'll do a zip or area around um, the listing because you know, something, you know, around Canton and 20 miles is pretty big radius around city of Canton. And the next thing we wanna do is add our interest targeting and interest targeting are going to be um, those behavioral targets of, you know, what is, what is someone's mindset? What are their interests that will best align with this advertisement? Because we want to make sure we're actually delivering this ad to someone that's going to be interested in real estate and not just random stuff. So I always recommend adding uh, Zillow and Realtor.com as their two interest targets because people that are going to like Zillow or Realtor or have been on either one of those websites recently is gonna show that they have uh, an interest in a new home. So if they saw this ad on Facebook, they would be more likely to engage with it because they already are interested in new homes. So I click on save selection, and then click save Facebook and Instagram ads. And then the last is the duration and budget. The system is gonna default automatically to a 10 day campaign and for a $30 budget, you can adjust that, you can make it as long or short as you want. If you're gonna advertise an open house, I recommend you start that ad on Monday and you let it go all the way through Sunday. So that'd be a seven day ad. So here I can just run this through the end of the month. And it's gonna let us know the total duration of the days and then it's gonna update our per day channel based on our budget. So um, this system defaults to $3 a day. So you can kind of make any changes that you want. Um, as soon as you update it here, it'll update the per channel uh, spend there. Below the campaign budget, it's gonna ask us 
it's going to default to distribute evenly across channels. I recommend that you use automatic placements for Facebook and Instagram ads, because as I mentioned earlier, Facebook owns both Facebook and Instagram. So it'll be able to tell which platform is delivering more leads for you. And you want the system to automatically optimize that delivery to the system or to the platform that's going to offer and generate the most leads. So use automatic placements for Facebook and Instagram ads. And this will show you here, uh, it will spend up to $1.56 on each platform. And once you're good there, click save, duration and budget. And we are good to go. Uh, above the preview here, we can click on this drop down and it'll show us the different options for preview. So what it will look like uh, on Facebook mobile, what it will look like as an Instagram ad, And then once you're good to go, you can click on publish campaign. Now, if you haven't added a credit card to the system just yet, it will require that you put in credit card information. And the way that command works is that it will bill you the full amount of the campaign. So for this campaign, I put a budget of $50. Command will bill you $50. We'll then put that $50 into a reserve fund. And then as your campaign delivers, it will pay out of that, that reserve. If for whatever reason it doesn't deliver $50 worth of media, let's say you have $10 left over, and then you go to run your next ad and you wanna run another $50 ad, you'll only be charged $40 because you have that $10 remaining in your reserve account. Okay, is this where command would prompt you and say, okay, get your credit card? Correct. Okay. So if I click publish campaign and I didn't have a credit card, it would make you, submit a credit card uh, here. So I'm gonna click save as draft. All right. And now this is gonna take me to uh, my paid campaigns dashboard and it's gonna show me all the activity for the last 30 days, impressions, lead, spend. I can scroll down here. I can see all the ads that I've run. So here's a couple of drafts <clears throat> that I've made as tests. But here's an ad that I actually ran. I have 200, spent $200 total. Zero leads because it was not a lead generating campaign for me. I got 542 clicks and I delivered over 100,000 impressions with a one a $1.98 cost per thousand. And I can now is this... Are you able to track who clicked on it with the paid ads or only those people who filled out the information? So it would only be the people that filled out the information in the Facebook lead gener generator capture page. So I, didn't, I wasn't trying to get leads from this. I just wanted my, ad, my listing to be seen by as many people as possible. But if I did have any leads, I could click on right here where it says zero leads. I can click on this and it will open up my contact page and it will pull in all of my new leads that came from this app. Any question, any questions on that? All right, so I know we kind of really quickly went through designs uh, and campaigns, but let me know what questions you have um, because we're kind of at the end of our time and I want to make sure I get everything answered for you. No, I don't have any questions. I've just got to go back and play with it and look at my notes and so forth and see if I can understand it. Yeah, well, as, as you're doing that, don't hesitate to reach out, ask questions. Okay. We can always set up some additional one-on-one uh, -on -one time as well. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Nick. Thank you. All right. We'll have I a great day. You too. Talk to you soon. All right.